All right, good day everyone, hope you're doing well. Um, the, had a little bit of feedback throughout the last couple of weeks saying a lot of people would really like to know what my competitors are actually doing. And while we're not gonna go over every single intricacy in this video for the sake of keeping it to the point, as well as for the fact that I don't want specific methodology stolen, um, we're gonna to try to keep it as transparent as possible and give you an insight of what some of my competitors are doing. And today we're going to start with one of my uh, IFBB first timers in Julian Forte. Um, a lot of people would know Julian who are from the Melbourne area. If you're not from Melbourne and you're tuning in, then Julian's a young man. I believe he's 25 or 26. Don't quote me on that actually. Um, so not quite a junior, competing in men's physique. <clears throat> uh, for his competitive debut, he's been with me from the bottom. And now we are planning on going for the top to the top. So a little bit of backstory on Julian. So Julian started with me around August of 2022. Um, he actually inquired like about six months earlier than that, but I had to sort of push him to sort of say, just jump on board, mate. Cause he would message me flat out about different questions. And I said, look, bro, like, let's just do it. Um, if you're not happy, we can just pull the pin after a few weeks uh, or well, after the minimum term. And obviously he was happy because we are now fast forward, what, 16 months and looking for a competitive debut. A um, few good things about Julian. Uh, he loves the process. He does what he's told. He asks questions. He communicates. He's passionate. Um, and if we go into a more specific level, he very, very well fits the criteria for IFBB men's physique. Obviously we still have things to work on, but um, the framing, the foundation is there. We just need a couple more years to really push to the top. And at first we're taking Julian on in this, um, in this journey. I wasn't sure how well he would see it through. I'm gonna be completely honest. Sorry if you're hearing this Julian. Um, and as, especially when he said, I wanna compete. And today at 12 weeks out from the IFBB, Vix, um, I can undoubtedly say that he has applied himself better than any other client that I have on my roster currently. Um, unbelievable. And the understanding of what's required of him, the understanding of the standard that he would have to meet to truly push for wins. Um, and the fact that this is a journey, um, not a sprint completely understood. So I want to go over his journey from start to finish. Um, obviously Julian is not of the natural caliber. So this needs to be taken into consideration as well. If you would like to know some more specifics, please don't hesitate in reaching out. Um, obviously nothing here to be provided is medical advice. Nothing is framework. Nothing will carry over from one client to another. Um, again, I will try to keep it vague. So Julian started with me around August of 2022. We jumped headfirst into a cut to begin the journey. So I believe that he started off here around the back end of August, 2022. And he wrapped up here at the start of January, 2023, completely natural throughout the course of this window. Throughout this phase, we went from around 87 kilos and finished up around that 81 kilogram mark and started at a weekly average of around 2,600 kilocal per week and ended up between that 2,000 and 2,300 with some light output in the 100 to 125 minute mark range. So we saw some good progress, but I feel like this was more a foundational phase for Julian before we sort of shift into our next growth phase, which is where we queued the PDs. So Julian's push phase started around that March, mid-March of 2023, and we kept in the PDs with relevant escalations to around the end of August. So this took us to around a 18 to 20 weeks sort of push up where we started around that 500 milligram, we started around that 500 milligram mark, we pushed up to around that 800 milligram mark. A lot of the focus around training was bringing up the deltoid region, um, as well as keeping calories in a relatively conservative place. The reason we need to keep them in a conservative place, so we sat around 3,000 for most of this time was due to uh, his, a history of GI issues, uh, which we didn't want to aggravate, um, as well as some family history of different issues in this department, which we didn't necessarily want to play into. So this was super important. And then as a result, of course, we saw some pretty progressive returns, but I believe what we settled around that 90 kilogram mark from a starting point of around 81, 82. So in all fairness, there wasn't a significant uh, responsiveness here for Julian. Um, we more so saw um, probably a little bit more in the middle of the middle of where we should have been. Um, and it's probably when we still in, actually engaged in the prep is when we really saw the returns. And I believe when we actually engaged in the prep is where we saw the returns is more than anything because 
basically his application went from that 80, 85% to a hundred percent. And that motivation went from wherever it was to like full throttle, full steam ahead, because we've now concluded that we're going to spend a long time um, competing and we are going to set our sights on the eventual uh, pushing for overalls, um, pro cards, so on and so forth. However long that may take, provided the passion stays ignited. So we obviously then proceed into a transition phase. So I think we held for around eight to 12 weeks at TRT. Um, and this was more or less true TRT, maybe a little bit above like a normal person's range, but hardly above that. And then from there, we engaged in prep where we didn't really have a huge requirement for cardiovascular training. Uh, we kept it out for most of the first chunk and we started calories around 2,800 where we did start to see returns. Um, the body did start to take shape, probably didn't take take true shape until that 15, 16 week out mark. But we started off with baseline of androgens, so testosterone, DHT, escalated up gradually to sit around that 1200 to 1400 mark, which is where we are right now in total. Um, and this has been relatively exceptional. So far, we've been able to trend from around that 90 kilogram mark, which is where we started prep, and to today where he is currently in prep, which is 80.1 kilograms. Um, with little to no variation in regards to the PEDs. The only variation that we did make throughout the course of it in regards to PEDs, it, we did have to escalate testosterone by 125 to 150 milligrams per week just because we were seeing suppressions in estrogen and we were seeing that he was relatively, I guess, stringy for lack of a better way of going about it. And this was respond this was received very, very well because the last week to week and a half, his check-ins and photos checking in twice per week have been exceptional. But the fact that he's down 10 kilos and he's looking at probably only another five or six um, in 12 weeks is relatively, well, not relatively, really good, especially considering that lipolytics, we are only utilizing 20 micrograms of clenbuterol. Um, cardiovascular training has only been back in the picture for around a fortnight now. So when I say a fortnight, he was on around 150 minutes he was on around 150 minutes. We pulled that out for a month to go to zero. And then only in the last fortnight where I realized, okay, we can get really far ahead here. I've queued back in four times 40. At the end of the day, we do want to be inside out. Funnily enough, Julian already has lean glutes, but that's, a, that's irrelevant because we are in men's physique. In regards to lipolytics as well, I believe we are utilizing injectable carnitine and a little bit of yohimbine. So things are going incredibly well in this department. So one of the grand questions is how many calories is Julian on as well? He is sitting under 2,400 on training days at the moment, 2,200 on non-training days. We have regularly refed. Rate of loss is typically sitting at around 200 grams per day. So refeeds will become more and more apparent, okay? We haven't brought in any selective androgen receptor modulators yet, such as Tremblone or anything which will modify or modulate strength, such as orals. And they are likely to come in very late if required. Not to say that they will be required, but there is a pretty high chance of deployment just because we obviously are going into this undersized and with a little bit less muscular density than what our competitors are. We aren't, we aren't fooling ourselves. We know that we're not going to win an open class or an overall, but it would be nice to be in the mix and to know that um, he gets up there and he loses no friends. The goal for all of my first times in the IFBB, realistically, as Julian completely understands, is to get up there and like I said, to lose no friends, basically you want to look like you belong. You don't want to lose on conditioning. Okay. So if we can go toe to toe for conditioning, we can go toe to toe for shape. We can go toe to toe for posing and whatever else is required. And we were to be misplaced by a freak, someone with a little bit more muscle, so on and so forth. This is acceptable. If we miss via conditioning, this is where it is not acceptable. But as far as I'm aware right now, we will well and truly be in the mix for at least the novice classes. Um, provided this comes to as we anticipate it to be. And then I believe that we will have a tilt at the open classes. Might not mean a top three placing. Um, might not even necessarily mean a first call out, but what it will mean is that when he stands next to those who are at the top, it'll be like, this kid looks damn good. In regards to lab work for Julian, I think we were running it around every eight to 10 weeks. So of recent, we've started pushing that up to every four to six, just to get different panels to make sure that we make accurate um, incorporations as well. But supplementation is relatively extensive. I think typically speaking, the only thing we really see skewing in panels is a little bit of the bilirubin, um, GGT and some liver enzymes, which is something which historically he's had elevations in anyway. So that's been relatively sound. And in regards to how I've gone about setting up training, as mentioned previously, we have primarily sat around that focus around the delts and arms. So recently we have brought the focus up around the arms as, as we've leaned out, we have noticed that there is shortfalls here. We started off 
in our early days, relatively high volume. So we're doing six days per week with a relatively large amount of sets because Julian was really just really getting a grasp of training well. But of recent, we've been able to taper that right down as we've gotten a better grasp of intensity. We're at five days of training per week. We're at a more traditional set. Um, we're in a more traditional sense of training in regards to set volume, top back off set, or just a couple of sets of working only. Um, and of course, just focusing on a little bit more of a frequency rather than really punishing a muscle group um, outside of, of course, the legs, which have less of an Im less, less importance at this point in time, regardless of the fact that we have still kept the legs relatively well managed, which has been actually super handy. Um, and in regards to nutrition components, he's kept his food relatively consistent from the day he met me to now. We've obviously made some changes from a preferential standpoint, um, but nonetheless, just as long as we are within our guidelines and our boundaries, we're quite happy as a collective. So the good thing about Julian, as I mentioned, I hear from him every day. I know where he's at. Um, he probably sends me too many progress photos at times, but things are going incredibly well. Um, very modest PED exposure, very modest incorporation to cardiovascular training. I believe we probably won't go above the 160 minutes for the course of prep unless we really need to just dig a little, depending on how the condition shapes up across the next few weeks. But in my view, I can't see this really happening, especially once we do bring in things like Trembolone um, and we do potentially bring in things like Anovar. Um, and then even if we were to look at escalating clenbuterol, I just cannot see a purpose to bring this up. If anything, it's probably more likely to leave than it is to exceed 200 minutes per week. Um, and then step count, of course, at 12,000. That's another one which I really can't see pushing up as well. But the one perk that we do have here is a relatively low stress load in regards to his work environment as actually Julian changed jobs just before the prep to a job which was a little bit more manageable to allow him to focus on this before he will focus on something um, potentially a little bit more intensive such as delving into his business following the prep. But uh, this is one I'm looking forward to and I'm really looking forward to getting the data and finding out where we stand during this competitive season because I do believe that once we have a really good understanding of that, we'll know what kind of time we need to spend on the sidelines and how many shows you might have to do. So I think the next time we do compete, we'll be looking at doing more than the two shows. Even though we are floating a third at the moment, it will still be within the country, of, within the bounds of Australia. But I think the next time we do this, it will be probably a little bit more border hopping and checking out some different shows to get a really good um, idea of where we're at in different, different cohorts, get some more data around peaking, uh, work out what works for him. Um, and then set our eyes on the prize, assuming that that is still what he wants to do and assuming that the potential does come to together as we would expect. Because we do need to, we need to consider here, a lot of people may be thinking you're being very optimistic about your clients. Um, I do believe Julian is somewhat, I'm not going to say made for men's physique, but he's definitely, he's definitely right up there. Um, and not only that, we have been, well, our PED exposure has been less than nine months and most of it, uh, not even breaching that low risk category, um, which most competitive bodybuilders will be in the medium to high risk category. Not to say that we would necessarily need to go there or that we want to go there, but the option is there if that's what he chooses to decide he wants to go down that path and we make a collaborative decision that it is suited. Um, not only to, not only this, but we also have our own application strategies from a nutrition training standpoint. Consistency has really taken a step up in the last six weeks. So to think this could be applied across a number of years, the sky's the limit to me. So looking forward to this one. As mentioned, please don't hesitate and ask me questions and speak to you guys soon.